Welcome to our faculty recital. I've chosen to present a recording from the past, a rendition of the Vaughan Williams Oboe Concerto from 1984. I was 32, and although I believe my interpretation has improved since then, I think it's an interesting souvenir of a past life. According to his second wife, Ursula, Vaughan Williams pronounced his name Rafe and any other pronunciation infuriated him. So Rafe Vaughan Williams composed his oboe concerto in 1944 during the Blitz, that is the bombing of London during World War II. He was 72 years old and although he preferred to be in London, he took a house in the country so he could care for his invalid wife, Adeline who had been in a wheelchair from arthritis for 30 years already. His mistress, Ursula, lived with them also. The three huddled together, holding hands as the bombs dropped on England. He was also just finishing his Symphony No. 5 of the nine he wrote. Both the symphony and the oboe concerto sound comforting and nostalgic in the time of war but there is much more to Vaughan Williams than beautiful country scenes. He famously said, why do people keep talking about cow pats? He wrote beautiful melodies, but often with a tragic sting. Vaughan Williams hated meaning to be assigned, but he was greatly affected by all that was lost in the two world wars. Personally, I imagine the graves of the ancestors when I play the expansive lento at the end of the concerto, followed by the presto, which reminds me of the dust blowing over the graves, to quote a phrase once used to describe the last movement of the Chopin Funeral March Sonata. Vaughan Williams' output is huge, including nine symphonies, quite a few operas, ballets, film scores, tone poems, concerti, choral works, songs, and some chamber music. He was a late bloomer, having composed his first symphony when he was 38. But he developed an unmistakable voice by consciously avoiding the influence of German Romantic composers. He was influenced by Tudor music, modality, English folk songs, elements of mysticism, and poets such as William Blake, Walt Whitman, and Shakespeare. And very importantly, the anguish and dire tragedy of the wars. He collected over 800 English folk songs in pubs and country towns in the matter, manner of Bartok. He never let his age slow him down or stop his creativity. His sixth symphony, provoked demands for explanation. He denied having written a war symphony, and he denied that the six minutes of pianissimo at the end depicted nuclear winter. He said, I suppose it never occurs to people that a man might just want to write a piece of music. At age 75, he composed the film score for Scott of the Antarctic, which later became the basis for symphony number no. seven. Scott and his party of explorers perished in the Antarctic storms, only 12 miles from the return camp. Their mission was a failure as the Norwegians reached the South Pole five months before. The film is terrifying and often the music is too. In his later symphonies, he employed all manner of exotic instruments, vibraphone, eerie wordless human voices, prominent celeste, lots of percussion, tuned gongs, and the ninth has three saxophones and a flugelhorn. In his last years, he wrote a concerto for tuba and a romance for harmonica and orchestra. I can never hope to hear all he wrote, but what I have learned in my current study is to bring out the strength, the backbone, and the dance swing of the minuet and musette, to show the sturdy English spirit at letter C in the first movement not so fast as in this rendition. And I would now definitely play the controversial trill after the first cadenza from F sharp to G sharp, because it seems to me more in keeping with his modal style. As I love old films, of course I've seen Scott of the Antarctic. 
It's powerful, frightening, and upsetting, but it shows a side of Vaughan Williams I'm glad to know. My personal favorite among his works is the Serenade to Music because its text comes from my very favorite scene of my very favorite play, Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice. I am never merry when I hear sweet music. His range was incredible. Along with the freshness of the countryside, there is strength and ferocity, pugnacious English bravery, sardonic wit, mystical insights, and possibly even a depiction of the end of the world in Symphony No. 6. Vaughan Williams was in good health when he suddenly died at the age of 86. His wife Ursula lived on for another 50 years, as she was 40 years younger than he was and she died in 1996. He declined a knighthood, maybe because he identified so strongly with ordinary people. His funeral was attended by massive throngs, and he's buried in Westminster Abbey next to Herbert Howells. To play the oboe concerto with understanding, I believe one should hear the lark ascending for its bird-like fluttering, his masterpiece Fantasia on a theme of Thomas Tallis, for its modality and hymn-like quality, and perhaps the overture to the Wasps for its witty, spirited, scherzando mood and the folk-like melodies. There's so much more to hear, and I look forward to discovering more and more of the world of Vaughn Williams. <laughs>